Hey there pups, we're back on another adventure. Picking up from my previous video where I focused on some personal accomplishments back in 2020, I quickly realized that I didn't really mention any of the other amazing good moments that happened within that year. Still reeling and feeling from the 2021 inauguration. Let's reminisce together and take a look back at some of the best moments of 2020. Be sure to head to the description box for the timestamps for each highlight. Before our society was affected by COVID-19, Americans and the world was gifted with the gloriousness that was Jennifer Lopez and Shakira at the 2020 Super Bowl. Both Latina performers lit up the stage with a myriad of colors, dancing, and spectacle. If you can imagine, Lopez was 50 and Shakira was 43 at the time of the show. Now that's truly inspiring. According to NBC News, Lopez and Shakira represented the first time two Latina stars were performed together on the Super Bowl stage. The show also featured Bad Bunny, J Balvin, and Lopez's daughter, Emmy Muniz. Of course, <laughs> the performance didn't come without a little bit of controversy. With stripper poles, cage-like structures, and both Lopez and Shakira scantily clad, it was no surprise conservatives had issues with what they deemed a sexually charged show. In a People Magazine article, Lopez admitted she snuck in the Puerto Rican flag into the show, not wanting to be told she couldn't include it. Well, as we've just previously seen, she's pretty good at ad-libbing. Despite the critics, the show received five Primetime Emmy nominations, winning one of those nominations. Not bad for Jenny from the Block and The Resident She-Wolf. And with a weekend slated to perform this year, I can only imagine what's slated for the 2021 Super Bowl show. I guess we'll just have to stay tuned. Of course, 2020 wouldn't have been 2020 without the ever-growing app, TikTok. By February of 2019, TikTok had reached 1 billion installs on both the App and Google Play Store, and according to TeleCrunch, remained in the top installs in the App Store well past May of that year. TechCrunch also reported that by December of 2020, TikTok had more than 800 million active users and was downloaded more than 2 billion times. But I've jumped ahead. With COVID-19 forcing people to stay inside over the summer, people flocked to TikTok in droves. Dance crazes and challenges abounded. The hashtag patience challenge had parents tempting kids with all types of treats. And of course, everybody knows the hashtag flip the switch challenge. I mean, even celebrities were doing this crazy dance. I'm sure every person at one point or another has made an attempt at the Megan Thee Stallion's uh, Savage Dance and man I gotta give you props if you even made an attempt at the remix. Similar to the Super Bowl though, TikTok didn't come without its own fair share of controversy. TikTok was owned, uh, well actually it is owned and created by a large Chinese tech that's called ByteDance. Many have kind of wondered what happens with all the data that's collected from the million of users that are on TikTok. And basically from here, this is where it kind of gets a little wonky. Uh, for a time, uh, the president actually wanted to try to ban the app. I know for government phones, they're not even allowed to have this app on their phone. Yet, despite the worries on drama and privacy with new content, dance crazes, and of course, more challenges growing every day, TikTok has proven it is now a mainstay in American culture. Welcome to 2020 version two. And it's definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. Another unexpected underdog in 2020 was the wildly popular series, Tiger King. Released in March on Netflix, the show detailed the life of a pretentious tiger keeper by the name of Joe Exotic. Comicbook.com reported that Tiger King stayed at number one on Netflix's top 10 for 25 consecutive days and was discussed in pretty much every friend circle that you had. It was chock full of death, deceit, murder for hire, and scandal. I mean, literally everyone was probably asking, did Kara Baskin really kill her husband? So tell me about what happened to your husband. Did you kill your husband? Hell no, nah, I didn't kill that man. 
And obviously, of course, it caught the attention of a lot of TikTokers with parodies that were sprouting up all over the app. Although, spoiler alert, <laughs> Joe winds up in prison, Carol Baskin found herself on season 29 of Dancing with the Stars, but was eliminated within the second round. With that being said, you know, Carol Baskin isn't entirely out of hot water. The family of Don Lewis, who was Carol's first husband, um, who everyone jokingly says has mysteriously disappeared with no trace of him, um, his family is suing Carol Baskin for defamation of character after some of the comments that she had said while she was on Dancing with the Stars. For all intent and purposes, I can honestly say Tyra King encapsulated all of us in 2020. It became literally the epitome of the year itself, essentially a dumpster fire. By summer, we were all trying to lift our spirits as we quickly realized that COVID wasn't going to be over as fast as we'd hoped. Uh, Disney was happy to oblige us and pretty much in a twofer. First, they announced that the critically acclaimed theater production Hamilton was going to be available on Disney+. Plus. Uh, the production, which was written by Lynn manuel Miranda, debuted on Disney Plus uh, in July, and it had massive success. Um, smart TV analytics company Samba TV reported that 2.7 million households streamed the program within the first week, which exceeded as many of those who have even seen it live. Um, and Seven Park Data said that the show was more popular than anything else on a major streaming service in July. Now, that is pretty impressive. And then just a couple of days after Hamilton had started streaming, Disney did us another solid and they quenched every basketball fan's thirst with the NBA uh, Disney bubble, as they called it. In July, 22 teams made their way down to the ESPN complex at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. It was reported uh, from the Wall Street Journal that the NBA invested more than $190 million to ensure the safety of the athletes um, while still allowing them to be able to play the sport that they loved. So prior to arrival, the coaches and the athletes, they were given an 113 page manual that basically detailed protocol, procedure for life inside of the bubble. Players weren't allowed to leave the premises and nor were families allowed in. One of the things that the athletes and basically everyone had to do was, of course, wear masks. Um, at all times, they were tested for COVID daily. Uh, players had chefs, barbers, manicurists, pretty much anything that they needed was at their beck and call. Um, and they even had to throw out playing cards after each use. So that strict it was crazy. Uh, players were offered thermal rings, which could note slight changes in their temperature. So even though they were being checked for COVID every day, if there was a hint that maybe they were, you know, catching the virus, it could be caught early on. Oh, with the devastating loss of Kobe Bryant at the start of 2020, it truly only seemed fitting that the Lakers would clinch the victory in the finals against the Heat after more than spending two months' time in the bubble. So, great for them. Good job. After the emotional turmoil that was known as 2020, by the end of the summer, we truly needed something to kind of lift our spirits. Uh, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion did not disappoint, as everybody probably knows, with the release of their hit track, WAP. Even though Cardi admitted to BET, the song almost wasn't released. The song was an immediate success, and it cemented her in the record books as the only female rapper to achieve Hot 100 number one singles in two different decades. BroadwayWorld.com also noted that Cardi and Megan became the first female rap duo to debut at number one in the Hot 100 and WAP went certified gold seven days after release. Woo! Of course, in pure fashion, there was a TikTok dance, of course. So I gotta say hats off to both Cardi and Megan. As Cardi would have said, she's truly. It's your girl Cardi B, and yes, I am a woman of the year. And for you, Cry Baby's like, but she only got one song. Yeah, I got that song, bitch. That bitch. Yeah. Another dynamic duo to smash the charts in 2020 was actually an unexpected collab with Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande. Their track "Rain on Me" released back in May, and the song had more than 21 million views within its first 24 hours. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 100, and of course, 
probably the piece de resistance for this whole track had to be the MTV Video Music Awards that they performed it, the song in August. Both singers performed for more than three minutes on stage while in a mask. Now, that is truly impressive. Like, that is the epitome of an artist. Rain On Me received seven VMA nominations and gave both Gaga and Grande a total of nine nominations, the most nominations for any artist that year. Well, pups, that is about it for this video. It's really nice to kind of sit back and remember a lot of the highlights that for a really rough year, um, you know, that people said that it was, it did have a, a, you know, a couple of good moments. Even though 2021 got off to a bit of a rough start. So let's try to carry on into our new year. And thanks so much for hanging out with me. Keep an eye out for some new videos coming on the pipeline. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.